Today I'm going to talk to you about the role of insulin and glucagon. Insulin and glucagon are two hormones that are produced by the pancreas and keep the blood glucose levels in balance or homeostasis. Within the pancreas, there is endocrine tissue called pancreatic islets or the islets of Langerhans. Each pancreatic islet includes four types of hormone secreting cells. We are going to focus on alpha and beta cells. These hormones are antagonistic as their actions have opposite effects on the body. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the role and effects of insulin. Insulin is a small protein. Its main role is to lower blood glucose levels. However, it also influences protein and fat metabolism. The release of insulin is triggered by elevated blood glucose levels, rising blood levels of amino acids and fatty acids, the release of ACH, and finally, by hyperglycemic hormones. Once it is triggered, insulin lowers blood glucose levels in three ways. Firstly, it enhances the transport of glucose from the blood and into body cells, particularly into muscle and fat cells. Secondly, it inhibits the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. And finally, it inhibits the conversion of amino acids or fats into glucose. Once glucose enters into a target cell, the following actions occur. Glucose is oxidized for ATP production. Glucose molecules are joined together to form glycogen. This is called glycogenesis. Glucose is converted into fat, especially in adipose tissue. This is called lipogenesis. Insulin also stimulates amino acid uptake and protein synthesis in muscle tissue. Now, let's talk about glucagon. It is an amino acid peptide and has a pretty big effect on the body in raising blood glucose levels. Just one molecule of glucagon can cause the release of 100 million glucose molecules into the blood. Glucagon mainly targets the liver as this is one of the major storage sites for glycogen. Glucagon is stimulated by low blood glucose levels, increased activity of a sympathetic division of the ANS, this can occur during exercise, or a raise in blood amino acids if the blood glucose level is low. The actions of glucagon include the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. This process is called glycogenolysis, lysis meaning to break down. Synthesis of glucose from lactic acid and from certain amino acids, i.e. gluconeogenesis, the creation of glucose, and the release of glucose into the blood by liver cells, therefore causing blood glucose levels to rise. It also has a secondary effect of lowering blood levels of amino acids, as liver cells use these molecules to make new glucose molecules. Now we understand the role of insulin and glucagon, let's talk about how the body stays in homeostasis using a negative feedback system. Imagine you have just eaten a meal high in carbohydrates. This will cause you to have high blood glucose levels, also called hyperglycemia. As a response to this, beta cells in the pancreas secrete insulin. Insulin unlocks body cells so that glucose can enter into them, i.e. removing glucose out of the bloodstream and into body cells. When the glucose is in the cells, glucose is used to make ATP for energy. Any extra glucose is converted into glycogen to be stored mainly in the liver and skeletal muscles. Insulin also accelerates the uptake of amino acids to increase protein synthesis. There is also an increased synthesis of fatty acids. These actions therefore cause your blood glucose levels to fall, which in turn inhibits the release of insulin. The body's blood glucose levels come back into the normal range, achieving homeostasis. Now, let's say it's been several hours and you haven't eaten anything. This would cause your blood glucose levels to drop. The low levels of glucose would trigger the alpha cells in the pancreatic islets to secrete glucagon. Glucagon travels to the liver in the bloodstream and targets the liver to convert glycogen back into glucose. As more glucose moves from the hepatocytes into the blood, the blood glucose levels rise and hyperglycemia inhibits the secretion of glucagon. Once again, homeostasis is achieved. To summarise, insulin and glucagon are antagonistic hormones secreted by pancreatic islets. When blood sugar levels are high, insulin is secreted to aid the movement of glucose from the blood and into cells, where it is used for energy or converted to glycogen for storage. When blood sugar levels are low, glucagon is released. This targets liver cells to convert glycogen into glucose. Glucose is then released into the blood, increasing blood glucose levels.